Welcome to Haxby Shed. I'm always on the lookout for another machine that might fit in here. I've already decided not to get a full-size milling machine. But something that I've been thinking about is a surface grinder. Now I imagine everybody watching this is going to know what a surface grinder is. But just in case, let me explain. A surface grinder is basically a grinding wheel which is vertical and spins like that. And then you put the work on the table and the table moves backwards and forwards like that and the grinding table advances and stripes across the work and gives you a highly polished finish for soft metal and particularly for hardened metal. So it's extremely useful. I kind of wish I had one, but when I look online, they're typically £500, £600. It's a lot of money to pay for something I barely ever use. I mean, just thinking about it, what are the components of a surface grinder? Well, you need a table, and the table's got to go up and down. Uh, a, a bit like this one, actually, a bit like this one. And then you need a, have to have a way of the work going backwards and forwards underneath the grinding wheel, or alternatively, you could have a grinding wheel going backwards and forwards over the work that's fixed. Uh, well, if there was something fixed to this ram, for example, it would be a bit like that. And then you'd have to have some way of bringing the work and grinding wheel closer together. And you'd have to have some way of the grinding wheel or the table moving across. Um, well, something a bit, a bit like this, actually. I, I think I've got the makings of an idea. Well, I'd need some sort of motor with a grinding wheel on it. Um, you know, a bit like an angle grinder. Well, well, maybe, maybe something like this. Maybe if I put it a bit like this, or this. If this could go backwards and forwards on here, that might work. But I'd have to make a, a I'd have to have a racket to, to fasten this to this. Um, I'm not sure what that would be like. Maybe, maybe something, maybe something a bit like this would do it. Yeah, I can, I can see the makings of it. But on these, you can only have a very thin wheel. I couldn't fix this onto it. It just wouldn't work. I'd need something, uh, something, a bit, something a bit like this, probably, which arrived today. Diamond wheel. 8 mil, I think, that is. So, okay, game's up. All right. <laughs> But I've never tried it out because I didn't have the grinding wheel. So this is the first time that I'm going to try and use my shaver as a surface grinder. <laughs> Sorry about the joke. Couldn't resist it. Here's my diamond grinding wheel. And you can see the labels on it. Hong Yu, written in Chinese. Now I use Google Translator quite a lot on my phone. And with a bit of luck, I should be able to work out what that says. I use the translator a lot because I've had comments in Russian, I've had comments in Persian on the channel, and I've always been able to reply. Now, I might be saying, you know, my chicken is on fire, but apparently I'm writing enough for them to reply back to me coherently. So it, it works really well. So let's just try with this. I'll have to set it up, but... Uh, Chinese to English and see what these labels are saying. Okay, let's have a go. I'll read it out just in case you can't see it. Concentration of abrasive particle size 75, binder S2, specification, can't read. And this is a certificate of conformity, inspector number one, date of manufacture, can't read the handwriting. Anyway, you get the idea. These things are pretty useful. I use them a lot. So we should be totally confident in this now, having read that. Right, here's the first issue. This angle grinder takes 225 millimeter bore discs, and this is 20 millimeters. Now, I don't know why I thought I'd bought something 22.5 millimeter bore, so I'm gonna to have to machine this out. I think I'll have to set it up on the forge or grip it ever so carefully on this brown edge here 
get it absolutely central and then just machine it out a bit so that it fits on that collar. Hmm. I'm just using a centre to get this set up in about the right place. And you see the bits of cardboard there trying to protect this diamond wheel face. And really these are just finger tight at the moment. And I don't think it'll be much more than that when I'm actually trying to bore that out. I'd hate to crack that surface. It was about 30 pounds for this. So not the sort of uh, thing you want to be breaking. That's about as good as I can get it. Actually, when I look at this, it needs to be 22 millimeters, not 22.5, as I said earlier. I think this is turning out to be a bit of a comedy of errors, but uh, hopefully we'll do better as we go along. Okay, that's a good tight fit. Let's put it together. That drops on there. That drops on there. There's a button on the top here to press in to lock that wheel. And there we go. Nip it up with this pin spanner. Right, that much is done. On a surface grinder, you would dress the wheel before you start to grind. And then you could be certain that the wheel was spinning absolutely uh, concentric. I've no idea if I can dress this. I don't know if I'd want to dress this. It's a diamond wheel. I'd use a diamond dresser. I don't know that I'd be working to that level of accuracy, really. I mean, we have to keep in mind that I'm spending 30 pounds on this project. Whereas buying a surface grinder, you know, might be five or six hundred pounds. So we have to kind of do what we can with what I want to spend. Anyway, it's time to put the bracket onto the shaper now. And then we can mount this up and take it from there. The angle grinder fastens onto the bracket with a bolt through the back and it connects onto the angle grinder body where the handle would normally screw on. And when I made this, I thought that it might flop around all over the place, but actually it's proved to be extremely uh, rigid. I think going forward, I'm gonna to have to put in some kind of indexing pin to stop it swiveling like this. But it's okay for this test and it's surprisingly rigid. I'm going to use this as a test piece. It's a roller from a CV joint and it's nicely hardened. So I'll set it up in the vise here with a couple of parallels underneath. That should do it. That's the idea. Well, this setup is pretty simple and crude, but it's produced a very nice finish on that. There was such a light load on the angle grinder, it didn't get hot at all. It's perfectly fine. It could have gone on like that for hours. And the cross feed was set to 0.1 of a millimeter or fourth hour, 
and I'm sure I could have uh, fixed up a faster cross speed than that. I can cross feed up to 12 thou per stroke on this, 0.3 millimetres. I'm going to try a 12 thou traverse with a 2 thou cut. Well that seemed to go pretty well, so as a final test at this stage, I'm going to try a 6 thou grind with a 12 thou traverse. Well I stopped that because I think it was a bit too much for it, but I think it would probably do 3 or 4 thou with a smaller traverse. Well, the idea needs a bit of development yet, but I think the principle is proved. Good morning. It's 15th of March, and it's quite a bright sunny morning for a change. I've been out on the park karate training one-to-one. -one. It's been a very long lockdown this time, and those mornings getting out on the park is a real boost. I'm the student, by the way, not the instructor. I tend to make my videos over several days and having a bit of a break in between gives me chance to think about the problem and uh, think of improvements. Now you can see this square up against this diamond cutting wheel. There's quite a gap there which is obviously telling us that the angle ground is not vertical. So I'm going to set up some kind of adjustment so I can bring the uh, angle grinder into vertical and kind of keep it there with a couple of set screws maybe either side so I can adjust it to vertical and it'll stay in position because at the moment it's only got that one screw holding the thing tight and in place. I've cut a bit of metal that I can weld there if I put a set screw into just there I can adjust how vertical this is. It's gonna mess my paintwork up welding this again but uh, it'll be fine. That's taking shape I just need to clean up the bracket and weld it on now. Here's the setup. Now I'm going to put a welding lens over the camera. Your uh, TV or tablet hasn't broken. I'm just fixing it on with a bit of sellotape and uh, try not to break it. Come on, behave yourself. I am wearing safety glasses. Ow. Hmm. Well, I've seen better. I missed a bit just there. So I'll just uh, smarten it up. It's strong enough as it is. But it'd be better if it looked a bit nicer. That's better. This paint is surprisingly heat resistant. It's only floor paint. Cheap enough, but it's really good. Takes about seven days to cure once you've painted. There we are, that's pretty good. You can see where that's going to go, can't you? So this screw's now set so that I can put this on and get it vertical quickly every time. So what I'm gonna do now is just try grinding a piece of soft steel and see what that goes like. Just say I wanted to get a really nice finish on this piece of black plate for some reason. I'm going to stop at that point. I've made several passes increasing the cut by a couple of thou each time. And you can see what's happening. Obviously this corner is lower. I think the problem is the vice itself. It's not a particularly precision vice. The table is better than the vice. Uh, and you can also see where I was trying to touch off and manage to get that wrong. It's quite difficult to do, to, to get to find the uh, touch off point. Anyway, you can see the surface. It's a little bit kind of rippled, just a tiny bit. But I'm quite pleased with that for a 30 quid project. I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching. 
Hacks be shared.